Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is, uh, well, Michael Stauson, and I'm the uh, founder and CEO of uh, a company called Sprout. And uh, I've been asked to talk this morning about shock. Actually, the first, uh, the first shock was yesterday when my, uh, when my PA told me I had to get up at 5 o'clock this morning to be here at 8 because the train, train left at 6 o'clock from where I'm living. So uh, that was a little bit shocking. Let's see how this works. Sprout, and that's perhaps the first shock to some of you who don't know what uh, Sprout is all about. Sprout is actually a pencil that you can plant, which may sound a little bit, uh, well, weird to say the least, but it's actually a I think a fantastic idea, a great idea. Um, this is our hero product. This is how we started. It's, it's very simple. It's a normal, ordinary pencil, which has um, a small uh, capsule at the end. Inside that capsule is uh, seeds and a little bit of peat. So normally you, uh, you write with your pencil, if anybody is still using a pencil. Most are using tablets these days, unfortunately. But Pencils are coming uh, back as a sort of way of, of slowing things down instead of everything has to be so fast, smartphones, tablets, uh, computers, everything all the time. So you write with your pencil. Usually when you have the uh, stop left, you throw it out, you leave it somewhere, you forget about it. But what about if you could plant it instead, use it for something entirely different, literally giving the product an entirely new life by planting it? Uh, giving it uh, love and light, some water also, preferably, uh, to see herbs or vegetables or, or um, uh, flowers uh, grow. That was the idea that a couple of young students from MIT in Boston had uh, some years ago. They had a, a product design course where they were asked to design and uh, uh, product for the uh, future sustainable office. So they sat down for a few weeks and they were thinking, they were throwing ideas around and they came up with a pencil with seats. They needed funding like most projects do. So what they did was they put it on, uh, they put it on uh, kickstarter.com. That's where we found it. Uh, a friend of mine came to me and said, uh, look at this uh, amazing, uh, uh, funny uh, uh, little thing, a pencil that can be planted. I was um, working with large companies at that time, uh, advising them on sustainability, on how to do responsible production, how to purchase in a sustainable way, not necessarily the cheapest way. But whenever I talked about sustainability, it was very, very hard to actually understand for people. Uh, I mean, everybody's talking about sustainability, but what is it? I thought the pencil with seats inside was a great way of illustrating what uh, sustainability is all about. The thing about not just using things for the use of it and then throwing away when you get fed up or when you can't use it anymore. Why not instead create products that gets a second life after you used it up for its original purpose? They did very well at the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, they looked for 25,000 US, they got 37,000 and from 2,000 backers. And for those of you who are familiar with crowd, uh, crowdfunding, crowdfunding is not only about uh, raising money, it's of course nice, but first of all, crowdfunding is about testing your market. If no one wants to back your product on a crowdfunding site, well, in real life, uh, nobody probably wants to back your project uh, either. And that doesn't matter whether it's a theater, uh, it's a book, or it's a physical product. Kickstarter or 
any other crowdfunding site is a great place to actually test your market, to test your, your, your product, right? So uh, we contacted the young students, uh, made an agreement with them to do the sales and distribution of the Sprout Pencil in Europe initially, and this was in the spring of 2013. Then something, oh, sorry. <laughs> then something happened. We were suddenly all over the media here in uh, Denmark, uh, TV2 News, uh, Aften Show, foreign medias were writing about it, and we were inundated by uh, inquiries from all over Denmark, from uh, retailers that wanted to carry uh, Sprout Pencil to sell it to consumers, from companies that wanted to use the uh, Sprout Pencil for green marketing, getting their logo or message uh, on here, using instead of the normal uh, plastic uh, ball pen, right? So it just, in a few months, went wild and crazy. And uh, we sold uh, in the spring before we launched in June of 2013, we sold more than 70,000 uh, Sprout Pencils. And mind you, at that time, the retail price was 24.95 Danish kroner, which is about three, uh, three euro, right? So this was not a cheap uh, product at, uh, at that time. What happens was, was also, and, and that was rather, rather shocking to be uh, honest, was that the whole concept, the whole story was caught on by bloggers all over the world actually. But for some reason in particular in Italy, uh, to date we have had, I think the number is uh, more than 1500 bloggers in Italy alone write stories about uh, the Sprout Pencil. So Italy today is our by far largest uh, market and we have learned that bloggers are, together with the media, a perfect uh, marketing uh, avenue. And I can tell you that in the two and a half years since we, uh, we launched, we haven't spent a single dollar, euro, krone on marketing at all. We haven't paid any bloggers, we haven't paid any, any uh, advertising or anything. Everything has been word of mouth and spreading the word through bloggers and, uh, and media. What Sprout? Well, today what we are looking at is that we want to grow this company into a global leader in green, sustainable consumer products. And that's a very big mission, that's very, uh, that's very large. But then again, you have, to, uh, you have to think very big. And when I say green, I mean products that can actually uh, uh, grow, preferably pro products with a two-dimensional use rather than just one, right? For us, sustainability is not only about production. Today, large companies, they're all talking about their being sustainable just because they uh, uh, produce and pay their workers a, a decent uh, wage. Well, that's part of it, right? But it's, it's much, much bigger than that. You also have to care about the materials you use and you have to actually also care about the way your product is being used because if your product is just adding to waste and just ending up in a, in a landfill, land, landfill, sorry, well, what's the purpose of, of the whole thing, right? We're looking also at, at, at products that, that can educate and can be fun for both uh, adults and, uh, and kids, right? To us, at least our products are much more than products. It's, it's an experience. I mean, bringing home a Sprout Pencil to your kid or, or whoever, you can actually talk about what is it all, uh, what is it all about, what is sustainability, and, and how can we, in small, small, small ways, do something to actually change the way we think uh, every day, right? The famous why, any company always has to, uh, has to have a why, right? To us, it's about doing away with the use and throw away culture. It was very, very uh, uh, imminent uh, before the, the so-called financial crisis, right? We all had to have six phones. We had to have at least two TVs in every room, preferably three cars in the, uh, in the uh, garage. And I'm not saying that consumerism is bad at all. I also have, I only have one iPhone, but, but I also have stuff, right? But it's just about thinking about the way we, uh, we consume, right? And that's what happened after the financial crisis. We have started to think much more about 
how we uh, we uh, consume. Uh, in America, they're still learning, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. They still have that Black Friday <coughs> after Thanksgiving, where everybody goes completely crazy uh, shopping uh, and getting big uh, discounts. We were asked actually yesterday from uh, from uh, some media in in the U.S if we are not going to, uh, to do some uh, stunts around uh, Black Friday, doing uh, some discounts on our products and stuff. And we said, no, it, it, it's not part of our uh, uh, vision. It's not what we want. I mean, we want you guys to buy Sprout pencils, but we don't want you to go crazy about buying Sprout pencils. Well, you can buy extra if you like, but don't go crazy about it, right? And it's a lot about before the crisis. I mean, just a couple of years ago or five years ago, people were talking about they wanted to sust uh, support sustainability. They wanted to buy organic uh, food and stuff. But when, when they were down in the supermarket or wherever it was, well, two kroner, uh, half, a, half a dollar more for a liter of milk, milk, that was perhaps a little bit too much, right? So they just bought conventional uh, stuff instead. Today, we rather spend a little bit more to get stuff that we actually feel makes a, a difference. So we have started to put our money where our mouth is, right? That's what it's all about for, for Sprout. We try to rethink products like the pencil, the hero product. And we try to think of ways to reuse them. And then finally, of course, okay, it's a little bit uh, cheeky, but uh, we like to make them Sprout, right? This, very briefly, is in Danish, but it says, can pencils and Christmas cards save the world? I would love to say that, uh, of course, this is going to save the, uh, the whole bloody world. It's not, but again, it's about doing small things in our everyday life that makes us think about how the world is, is, is going to be a, a different uh, place when we consume, right? Now to the shocks. Once you start to, to grow as a company and you have a, a popular, uh, fantastic, uh, great uh, product, shock, you get uh, copied by uh, other people, right? Unfortunately, this is something we spend a lot of uh, time on, is to defend our patents and our trademarks and our IP rights. And I can tell you that's very, very bothersome for a small uh, company to have to spend money on, especially lawyers, they don't get cheaper just because you're small. What happens with, we try to make products that we can patent, products that are unique and no one else can do, right? So for the Sprout pencil, for instance, we've had a, a patent uh, pending for a couple of years now, which means that it's moved into what you call national uh, phases. It's being approved around uh, the world for final uh, patent. We are protecting our uh, trademark Sprout everywhere we can so that nobody is uh, copying, using it. Still, we are getting challenged by, uh, by copyists uh, everywhere uh, on the internet and, and we're meeting them everywhere trying to make copies of this. We tried to buy a, a copy uh, a few months ago. Uh, we received something that looked like this, but uh, when we uh, opened the uh, capsule, instead of Pete, there was a small sponge inside and uh, something looking like, well, we have a PhD in plants and uh, seeds uh, in the company. She said it looked like a, a mouse uh, shit. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's not only about protecting our, our patent and trademark, but it's very much about protecting our whole company because people buying a, a copy will naturally think this comes from Sprout, right? And feel a, a little bit uh, screwed when they try to grow a, a, a mouse uh, shit. <laughs> so, so talking about that, I, I have no idea what, what you guys here are doing, but someone maybe have an idea, maybe want to take a patent on that idea, which is great. You have to do that by all means. But in the end, a patent is only as strong as the money you can put behind to defend it, right? What's most important is the first mover effect. I mean, the, the wow effect of something new and unique, right? And the brand, that's everything. If you can do that, it's a lot easier to defend a, a, a patent, right? Sprout today, 
We, uh, we are located in uh, Tostrup, which is uh, not so far from uh, here, uh, except if you take a car in the morning, uh, which I didn't. <laughs> and two months ago, we opened up an office in uh, Boston, in USA, uh, hired a sales director, hired uh, some salespeople over there. And in the US, we sold as much in September as we did in January until August combined just by, uh, by uh, putting some effort into the uh, sales over in the US. We have uh, 15 uh, full-time staff uh, here in, Tost uh, in Tostrup as well as in, uh, in the US. Today we are selling in more than 60 countries uh, all over the world. We have sold more than 3 million sprout pencils alone in the last uh, two uh, years. We are selling about 450,000 sprout pencils per month today. And it's on the backbone of this, we have this vision of, uh, about becoming a global brand. When people think green consumer products that can sprout, that can grow, they should think sprout, right? Uh, just for the uh, financially uh, minded, uh, we are in our second year of uh, business uh, now and we are doing uh, plus uh, 10 million uh, kroner, which is about 1.3 euro, uh, million uh, euro, right? Uh, and we are profitable, which we also were in year one. And that's not bad for a startup company, actually. We, well, I'm a little bit uh, proud to say the least which you're not really allowed to say in Denmark, right? Because of Yandelon, but uh, I spent 15 years in uh, overseas, so I, uh, I forgot about that, that one. The future, the sky's the limit. We, I mean, there are billions of people out there that have no idea we exist. I think uh, there's no limits to our market. We haven't even started in Asia yet, for instance. Asia is becoming more and more uh, sustainable. USA is right now, where Europe were two years ago, they're starting to worry about uh, GMO, uh, eco-friendliness, organic uh, products. Mostly on the East Coast and California though, uh, Texas and Minnesota, they don't really care yet about uh, sustainability. They have other issues. What is very important to the future of Sprout is also uh, our product uh, development and, and the innovation. Uh, we have to continue to make products that create a wow uh, effect and that are unique, right? These are some of the, uh, the products uh, we, uh, we have introduced uh, recently. The, uh, the obvious one, the color sprout pencil by popular demand from uh, especially uh, kids. We were looking at trying to find a, we, we, we know that most of our customers are urban Many live in apartments, they maybe don't have access to gardens, or they're not really familiar with planting uh, stuff. So how can we make it easy for those, uh, those people? They don't want uh, to mess around with soil and, and dirt in their uh, nice apartments, right? So we came up with a, a small, uh, small box, and instead of peat, we use a hemp mat. Hemp is 100% natural. So what you do is you just simply uh, sprinkle, uh, sprinkle your seeds on top and you water it, which means that it grows straight from the hemp mat and within two, three days, you already start to have uh, growth. And that's a very important thing because today we as people are very impatient. We don't want to wait for a pencil to take two weeks, which most seeds does, to actually grow, right? We love to see something grow uh, straight away. We uh, constantly look at uh, new, uh, new innovation, uh, new products uh, that can be planted. This is, um, this is a sneaker. What if your sneaker could be planted after you uh, used it? What if the uh, sole had uh, seeds? Do you know how many million, probably billions of sneakers that are thrown out or, or discarded every year because we outgrow them or outwear them, right? What if you could plant it? after use instead. It's something that's being worked on. We haven't quite figured out uh, what happens uh, if you're running in, in, uh, in the rain, which it does right, uh, quite often here in Denmark. Uh, are you going to lose your shoes? Or? So it's a work in progress. Another obvious uh, thing is the, um, is the uh, chopsticks. <laughs> Thank you. 
Chopsticks are being used uh, all over the world, everywhere. Even here in Denmark, we use chopsticks in uh, sushi uh, restaurants, uh, Chinese restaurants. Can you imagine how many of those are being thrown out, thrown out every single day because they are one, uh, one time use uh, only, they're not reusable? What if you could take them home after your visit to Sticks and Sushi and plant them instead? Would make a lot of, uh, a lot of sense. Because we have an, a patent that covers all kinds of writing instruments that can be planted, of course, we try to go for the, uh, the low-hanging uh, fruits. We are looking at uh, eyeliners, makeup. There's a lot of uh, women here. I, if I asked to look in one of your handbags, I would probably find anywhere from five to 10 eyeliners, uh, lip liners. Uh, I forgot all the names, but there's a lot. I know we checked in the office, so I'm not, uh, I'm not joking. What about the handymen? The carpenter, the, uh, the, uh, uh, they're using very large pencils. I've been told that they're using four pencils every week. A carpenter, or a, a, I forgot the English word, a term. Um, and they usually just, they are this big, right? And they usually only use them until here. And then they throw them out because they become too small to fit in the pocket. They have to reach down too far, it's, it's too inconvenient. So they just throw them away. What if we could make them uh, sprout? Golf pencils, the small ones being used everywhere. These are just some of the things that we are, are looking at and considering. And what I, have to, to, what I want to tell you is that when you are doing, from, from some of you are from, probably from uh, business schools, uh, you had innovation and stuff, right? The single most important thing when you are looking at uh, innovation and, and product development is to always keep an open mind. I mean, you cannot say no to anything, no matter what you're looking at when, whenever you are looking at uh, new ideas. Not so long ago, uh, one of my staff uh, during a meeting said, we are doing these packets of, packages of uh, sprout pencils with different ones. She said, why don't we make a secret sprout pencil inside, a lucky, lucky sprout, one you don't know what is before it starts to actually grow. And to be, <laughs> to be honest, I, 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 um, I said, that's the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard. It's, it's, it's not stupid, but it's just ridiculous because people want to know what they're planting. I mean, they don't want to be uh, surprised thinking they get a forget-me-not flower and instead they get uh, chili or whatever. But, but she was very insistent and she kept coming back on this uh, idea. So I said, okay, I mean, just to get her off my back, I said, <laughs> let's uh, ask the social media the, the, the manager to put it on, uh, on uh, uh, Facebook and, and wherever we have, ask people what they think. And uh, I thought that was the last of it. A um, few hours later, uh, on our Facebook, I think it was, uh, more than 200 people had made comments and not one single person thought it was a bad idea. 200 people thought it was the most amazing idea they ever heard about. So, uh, so now we are making Lucky Sprouts and I, I never say uh, ridiculous to anything uh, anymore. <coughs> that was pretty much uh, it. I hope I stuck within the 20 minutes. Uh, anything else, feel free to uh, visit the uh, website, of course. Thank you so much.